Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to set up a harvester. I'm going to try and do it as fast and quick and efficient. No confusion whatsoever. Update of 215 plots. I'm actually increased, actually, well, decreased my time to take to plot. It's become five hours and 49 minutes. I'll get into the details of how I'm doing that in a later video, but today we're trying to do a harvester in the command line, no GUI. Hopefully that will help you do a little more efficiently with your plotting. Let's go. Hey guys, so here you can see I have a harvester machine. Let's pretend that you just built out this new Windows 10 machine and you want to use it as a harvester. So let's begin on step one, is copying the CA folder from your farmer machine. And how do we do that? I'm going to show you now. I already had done on the farmer machine. I had shared out the folder where I need to grab the CA. For simplicity's sake, on my machine, I have it set up this way. I already have a share that I mapped over to my farmer drive. I'm going to just click on that. And then you can see here that I have a CA folder. That CA folder is the folder that I had copied into the share. Well, you can grab it directly. You can copy it to a USB stick, but this is what I did. So I'm just going to take this folder and copy it over to my harvester destination. Great, now we're done with that. Step two, we are now going to edit the config file on this harvester machine to change this log information from warning to info. Let's go and do that now. You're gonna to go to the location of where it's installed in the users direct under the account that it was installed under, .chia, mainnet, config. Now you're gonna click on this config file. You can edit with a text file open that up you're going to see the log info here it is going to say warning when you first start i actually had made this change already and i put info so just put info and then close it out and then save your file let's go into step three simple enough so far right step three requires us to go into the farmer machine and copy the seed words that that, that's the 24 words that you have when you first set up the farmer machine. It's very critical because now we need that in order for the harvester to communicate back to our farmer. I already have a farmer machine RDP session already logged in. Now, usually when you launch your application on the farmer, you're going to see the SCUI. And if you had already put in your private key, it's going to show up there as an option. How you can get into this, if you're already in the GUI, you can just click on the icon on the bottom left on the column here that says keys, it literally brings you back to the main login session of Chia. So how you get the keys is right here is when you click on your little eyeball, that's gonna bring up a ton of information regards to your private key, public key, and your seeds. Right now, we're just concerned with the seeds, so we're gonna highlight that and hit Control C, hit OK. We're just gonna log back into that session because I like to see what's going on in the machine. So of course, this is the farmer now, all right? This is my farmer session. Now I'm just gonna minimize that to make sure that you understand that we're back in the harvester. I'm gonna right click, create a new text document. I'm gonna call this seed words, all right? Seed words. Open that up, control V, paste the words that we just copied over from the farmer over to the harvester now. Click X, and of course you want to save this file. So far so good, right? Now the next thing we wanna do is download the Chia application. We do not want to run it. We don't need to do anything else. We just need to install it. So this is what we're going to do. You come to Chia.net and just click on Windows, and then it's gonna start downloading. You can see I have multiple sessions here. So I'm just gonna X this out. I'm gonna pretend it finally downloaded, and here it is. I'm going to click on open file. So of course, we're still on the harvester machine and we're installing 1.1.4. So once you have it installed, we no longer need this anymore. We're just going to exit out. It's basically just making sure that the application is on this machine so it can we can utilize it to do what we need it to do. Now we're going into step five. It requires us to open up a PowerShell window. And how do we do that? We're going to go into the C drive, users. We're going to go to the account that we have it installed app data local chia blockchain app 1114 resources app asar pack daemon once we're here we're going to right click and click on open powershell window from here that way it opens up the exact directory of where we want it to be so what are we doing here so now we actually have to import the keys that we just copied over powershell window open to where we need it to be we want to make sure that we copy this over to the c drive you can leave it on the desktop but it just complicates things because you have to start typing out the location of the folders. 
So what I like to do usually is make it really simple. Just go to the C folder, the root of C, just copy the two files over. I know it'll be a duplicate, which is fine. We can use the one in the C drive. We can actually, if you don't like clutter on your desktop, like me with my OCD, I can just delete it, which is perfectly fine because now we have a copy on the C drive anyway. So this is what we need to do. Now that we have that copied over, we're in the PowerShell. We need to import the keys over to our Chia application. So that way it knows that it's associated and it's linked with our farmer. So what we're going to do now is type in period backslash Chia and then keys add. So basically in plain English is that we're adding keys to the Chia, uh, the Chia application, which is located in the C drive, which we just copied to make sure. Remember, I just showed you that we copied seed word text file over. So you have to name that the same way that we're importing. So it's called seed word dot text. And that is it. We hit enter. Added private keys to your public key fingerprint. Everything is there now. Okay. We're in good standings right now, guys. You're doing well. You're doing well. You guys are all going to score a hundred percent guaranteed. Now we want to enter the IP address of the farmer into this config file. So the harvester knows who to communicate with. So what we're going to do is go into the C drive users, my account, Achia, mainnet, config, and then the config file. Here we're going to be looking for the IP address, the farmer peer. So we're just going to scroll down. It's not a large file. So this is where we're going to find it right over here. You want to enter the IP address of your farmer. Now that you have the IP address entered, just X out of that and save. Simple enough, right guys? We're on track right now. We're still on track. Let's close out of this. What we need to do now is copy over our certificates over to the harvester, which we already have it on the C drive. So what we're going to do is type in this period backslash C, uh, Chia, sorry, initialize dash C, C colon backslash CA. That is the CA folder that we had located over here. You remember from earlier, we had copied our seed words and the CA folder from our desktop over to this root of we hit enter. And you can see that it's copying the certificates over to now importing it basically into our harvester machine. Now we're good. I think we're all done. Not yet. We have a few more steps and we're pretty much really done at that point. Now we just have to initialize and turn on the harvester. And how do we do that? Period backslash Chia start harvester. Hit enter. Give it a moment for it to think and it has started. We are looking very successful at this moment. Now we're going to confirm that we actually do see it. And how do we do that? Verify that you can see this harvester on your farmer. I'm going to launch back. I didn't close out of my RDP session. I'm going to come here, click on farm and show advanced option. Now you notice you don't see anything here right now because it kind of needs a refresh, but you do not want to close out the application. So what I normally do is just hit click on keys, which kind of brings you back to the main logon window. Click on my session, scroll all the way down to show advanced options. Now you see this, this is my harvester. This is our harvester. This is who we just configured. And how do we confirm that it is us? I hope that it is us because no one else really should be connected to this besides me. We just confirmed that 192.168.1.125 it is us. We are connected to it right now. We have a successfully connected harvester machine. I'm going to minimize our farmer machine. Now what do we do? Now we have to create plots. And how do we create plots on the command line? Well, okay, so now we're going to start the plot in the PowerShell. But before we do that, we should take a look at the command line references that we have on GitHub. So that way it could tell you exactly what these switches are and if you were willing to use them or not, depending on your situation. So here are a couple of examples that you can use. I already copied it and pasted it over here. Of course, this is not the exact because this path to temporary directory is just an example. So what I'm going to do is delete that and then go back here and delete this as well. Now, if you don't understand what this means, slash T is your temp directory. Okay slash T right here says temp directory. Define the temporary directory for plot creation. For me, my temp directory is my D drive. Slash T D colon backslash is my temp directory. Now let's look up what that D is. 
dash D is final directory. And my final directory is this eight terabyte plot, which is drive E. And I will put colon E colon backslash. We can also put a number of plots. If you want to do the queues, it tells you here number of plots will be made in sequence. Once a plot is finished, it will move on to the final location before starting the next plot in sequence. So if you put in a dash N anywhere here, it will just tell you how many plots you want to run in queue. It'll start off the first one, and once that one's done, it'll continue on down the queue line. So let's see what else do we have that we would be interested in using here as a trigger. Number of plots, memory. So one other thing I would like to use is slash R. And this defines right here. Two is usually the optimal. This is the amount of threads. So if you left this without the slash R, it will use two. But since I want to do more than that, I want to use four. So I'll put slash R four. Now I'm pretty much set. I want to start it. It takes a little bit to think. I just forgot my period and my backslash and then I'll hit enter. Now you can see it plotting. All right. So how do we confirm that this is actually communicating back, which we already have with the farmer, the debug log. Go back into our farmer and where we're going to be looking for is the debug log file. That's located here in the user my account dot chia mainnet log and then you click on this log file here it's going to show you a whole bunch of connections that it made but we, we're looking for ours specifically so we're going to find 192.168.1.125 because that's who our harvester machine is and you see that new signage point harvester to appear that's us all right so we can close out of that Let's close out of our farmer session and let this harvester do its thing now. We can close out of all this. Don't really like clutter. That's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this and find this really helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Reach out to me. You can always email me as well. You can also find me on Reddit and Instagram. I want to thank you guys for being here again. I appreciate you guys always coming, subscribing. Please share, like, and comment if you can. Thank you so much. See you again soon. Bye.